Amazon Echoes and Alexa, or HomePods and Siri. Which one do you go with? Uh, they both offer some great stuff, so I say get them both. But in reality, you're probably trying to decide which way you want to go. So in this video, I'm going to share with you five things you should consider before getting a HomePod or an Echo. We're going to take a look at some pros and cons of each of these devices, starting first with the ecosystem. That's probably one of the most important things you need to consider before getting either one of them. If you're an Android user, get an Echo, get a Google Home. You might have better integration in there. Get those, be done with it. Stop watching, video over. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, there are some great benefits to HomeKit, and if you have an iPad, you can take advantage of those. I do have a video down in the description that shows setting up a HomePod Mini using an iPad. First, let's talk about the pros of the Echoes. Really, you have so many different Amazon devices to choose from. You have all the different Echoes, the Fire TVs, the Fire TV sticks, the Fire tablets, you have Eero routers, Ring devices, and more. Between all those, the Echoes bring a very complete smart home package. It is also the most open of the ecosystems. And part of that is that they don't have their own phone and their own OS, so they need to work with Android and iPhones. Some of the negatives, if you don't like the Amazon interface, it's very consistent across all their devices. Uh, some of their devices I feel are a little slow. Now you don't get a lot of phone or tablet integration, not like Google and Apple. Both of those really work deeper within their uh, respective OSs. Now the pros of the HomePod mini is what everybody says, it's the Apple ecosystem. And there really is a strength in that. Uh, for the things it can't do, the benefits it brings is that it can integrate within the native Apple apps in a way that the Echoes can't. I see the HomePod Mini as more about connecting your devices in and outside the home. Now, some of the negatives of the HomePod Mini is maybe you don't like the interface. Uh, it's very closed off to third-party services, something that they really need an app store. It's kind of silly they don't have one by now. It's time to open this thing up to do it more. Next, which assistant do you want? Do you want Alexa or Siri? Uh, Siri has a bad rap, but I think it really depends what you want to use your smart speaker and assistant for. If you want more features and a better assistant, I say go with Alexa and the Echoes. Uh, you can do so much more than you can with Siri. You can play games, you can access third-party skills, uh, the amount of information requests you can do on it is pretty large, and so much more with them. Now for the features that Siri lacks, I think it really comes down to that native app integration that adds a lot of value to it along with the smart home control. Now something to think about no matter which one you go with, you need to learn the right commands. If you just guess and you don't actually really learn what they are, you're gonna get frustrated with either one of them. For me, I find Siri does well with adding things into the native Apple apps. It's great for music and smart home control. Now for information, definitely hit or miss and when in doubt just sends you to the phone to find out. So maybe instead, this should ask this for some help. Next is the features of these devices. Uh, the Amazon Echoes definitely have way more features to them than the HomePods, but I would describe it this way. The Alexa features go very wide, but not necessarily deep. There are certain features that really need an update that haven't been touched in years. Now with the HomePods, there's not as many features, but I feel like it really gets deeper with more options on the features they do have. Now some of the pros of the Echoes, again, you got the Alexa on there who's great for information, weather, how to do things, whatever you want to know, news and all that stuff. Uh, the Echoes are also great for entertainment. You can connect them to music services like iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, Apple Music, and more. Uh, you also, with the Echo Shows, you can play video on them from Amazon Prime, Hulu, and Netflix. Also, they're great for bringing up your Audible audiobooks or just having a Kindle book read to you from them. Another nice feature is that the automations and routines go beyond just controlling your smart home. You can get news briefings, how long your commute's going to take, uh, weather, and so much more worked right into those routines. A couple of cons I have is I think Amazon needs to work on the features they have and not try to add any more features. Um, I think they also need to listen to customer feedback a little more. They keep putting things on the screen that could be annoying, you know, things to try, add stuff like that like that. There's no multi-user support when it comes to family plans from Apple Music, Pandora, 
or Spotify. Um, everybody has to share the same account. And with the Echo Shows, they really need a dashboard on here so that you can access things you want quickly. And not, not that swipe down thing right there. Some nice features of the HomePod Mini is that native Apple app support. You can uh, put stuff in notes, reminders. You can send messages, make phone calls, add stuff to your calendar, and more. Now for smart home control, I really like the Apple Home app. You can use it across all of your Apple devices. It gives you a lot of control over your devices, such as creating scenes and automations. The HomePod Mini is great for listening to music. It is a powerful a little speaker. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but you can hook up some third-party services to the HomePod Mini. If you look at this right here, here are the supported services. So take a look at those. You might want a HomePod Mini now. I love that I could send a message through Apple's Message app using the HomePod Mini. I can also answer calls when they're coming in using the Mini. Uh, one of the coolest features is Handoff, which I did a video on. I'll put that down below. It allows you to pass your music or phone calls off to the HomePod. Um, now, what I don't like about it, uh, well, it'd be nice to get a little bigger for some better sound, uh, but it's that lack of third-party app integration. I think that's a lot of people's sticking point. If you need a new smart home camera, today's sponsor, SwitchBot, can help you out with the new pan tilt cam. This is a 1080p Wi-Fi enabled camera that has 360 degrees of pan and 115 degrees of tilt. It will track motion when detected. Detected. Also, recordings can be saved locally using a micro SD card, or you can sign up for cloud service. One way SwitchBot helps protect your privacy is they have privacy mode that tilts the camera down so it physically can't see anything. Now you can turn this on through the app or you can pair it with SwitchBot sensors and NFC tags. With the NFC tag, you scan it, you confirm it, and then it'll go into privacy mode. Now you know the camera can't see you. To learn more about the SwitchBot Pan Tilt Cam, check out the link in the description and save with the promo code CRAIG10. Next is the choice of devices. Now the pros of the Echoes are that you have a lot of different choices at different price points. Uh, the Echo fourth generation sounds really good with its new speaker configuration. Uh, the Echo Show uh, brings to you the visual side of Alexa and allows you to stream different media to it. The Echo Show 5 and Echo Dot are great budget options to get anyone started in their smart home or just add a speaker to any room. Recently, Amazon added the Echo Show 15 to serve as a hub for your family. You have the Echo Show 10 that actually moves around. A lot of different choices. Now, some of the cons of the hardware is the touchscreen on the Echo Show is just too slow at times. It really needs to be sped up. Um, everything seems to go to the cloud, so there really is no local control, which causes delays to get information come back and forth. More stuff should happen on device. Now, the HomePod Mini brings a nice little package. It really sounds a lot better than I expected out of a speaker this small. It doesn't sound as good as something like the fourth generation Echo. For that, we need a full-size HomePod, which hopefully will come soon. The HomePod Mini can also serve as a HomeKit hub, so if you get one of these, you get supported devices and start your smart home. A nice addition to the HomePod Mini is that it supports Thread. And if you're not familiar with Thread, it is a more robust self-healing Wi-Fi network where devices connect together. The Thread strips and bulbs I use are really fast. You have the U1 chip in this that can tell with great precision whether U1 devices are. Hopefully we'll see that used with automation. Uh, right now it does help with handoff that allows you to pass music or calls off to your to your HomePod. Now some cons of the HomePod Mini is that it is small. It's not gonna sound as good as this $99 Echo here. Apple really needs to make a full-size HomePod to be able to compete sound-wise. Apple also doesn't have a version of the HomePod with a screen, something they really need to be able to compete with the Echo Show. Hopefully something that will give a really nice hub interface for a smart home. Again, we need a larger HomePod for improved sound. Also consider the smart devices that go with these. In the past, HomeKit devices have cost a lot more. You're seeing more affordable HomeKit devices, but still there are less choices and some of them can still be expensive. I love that the Mini supports thread, so I'm able to use the Nano Leaf strip and bulbs. Uh, those work out great. I like them a lot. Now with Amazon Alexa and Echoes, you do get a lot more choices to them. They use 
use uh, different security and protocols that uh, really make it easier for a lot more manufacturers to make compatible devices. Not that you should necessarily buy some of those devices. Really, anyone can make a Wi-Fi device, and that's why you'll see so many of them out there. Another benefit to Echoes like the Echo 4th generation is that it has a Zigbee hub built in, so that means you can control and pair Zigbee sensors to trigger routines and automation, so, and also have local control of those devices. Next, let's talk about privacy and security. Uh, this is becoming more important as we learn more and more how our data is being shared. Both Apple and Amazon admit that they listen to customer recordings uh, to improve their assistant. Uh, they say that all personal data is stripped away so, to protect individuals. But overall, Apple has a better reputation for security and privacy. They have a model that is sell you really expensive stuff and sell you services. HomeKit is de designed to process requests locally Locally, the way that Apple sees it is there's no reason your smart plug needs to talk to the internet when this can just talk to the smart plug. Now the cons is that it is a very closed off system. Not all manufacturers want to make HomeKit devices and go through the extra cost of that certification. Apple's smart home share is at about 10% right now. So do they want to actually go through all that work for a small market share? Now I did a video on Amazon and ad targeting, but when you make a request, Amazon takes what you said and what it thinks you're feeling at the time and passes that information on to uh, third parties for advertising. Good thing on the Amazon side is with privacy concerns that have been brought up in the past, they do give you a lot of options to control what's being done with your recordings or to opt out completely. Same with Apple, you can opt out of their recordings too. Now there are benefits to both sides. I use both in my house. I think this is great for the information and assistance side of things where the HomePod mini is better for my app integration and for the smart home control. Now, are you team Alexa or Siri? Let us know in the comment section. Next, make sure to check out this video over here so you can see why I switched to Apple's HomeKit. I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching. Bye.